How's it going everybody? So a few months ago I had a video go a bit viral, which means not only did I get viewers who like my content, but also a bunch of viewers who don't. <laughs> and oh my goodness can they complain. Apparently I'm about to cut off my fingers, die from asphyxiation, and burn my shop down. Goodness. That being said, I do agree with the air quality issue. I don't use any dust collection, so there is a ton of airborne dust whenever I'm sanding something. Which, it's a wood shop. That's like 50% of what I do. I've been using this box fan with a furnace filter leaned up against it for the last few months, and this actually works surprisingly well. So, I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to build a proper air cleaner for the shop. However, a few weeks back my kids had a sleepover and they wanted a fan. It didn't survive. So, first off, the only things I can actually salvage from this fan are the cord and the blade. Everything else was broken beyond what it's worth to repair. Luckily, I have another motor to work with from a much older box fan, so once I put the cord and the blade on that, I was in business. I decided to make a new box out of some oak plywood I had left over from another project. I want the size of the box to match the furnace filters I already buy for the house. I can get these for about $2 a piece, so that's all this project is actually going to cost me. I'm cutting one of these boards shallower than the rest of the pieces, so the filter can be replaced easily later. So what I want you to do, is I want you to start rubbing this around with your finger. Good job. So this box needs to be three individual layers. The first one is going to be the baffle for the front and the other two are going to be the housing for the furnace filter. Both of the latter two can be cut square to match the furnace filter, but the baffle has to be cut round and all of them have to fit inside the box. I used a scroll saw and a drill press to make the cutouts accurate, but you could just as easily use a jigsaw to make these cuts. There's really no reason to make it more complicated than it needs to be. Since I wasn't planning on making any mistakes, I figured these could just be glued and nailed into place. Seems like a pretty good idea at the time. I cut a 45 degree angle on these guide rails, but I decided after the box was built that I should have cut them just a little bit deeper. They did work the way I designed them, but the furnace filter is still a bit difficult to remove. The only reason I have them there at all is to evenly space the furnace filter. The guide rails just get glued and tacked into place, and then the rear face can be glued and nailed as well. I just use the furnace filter for spacing. So I intentionally left a little bit of a lip on the box for the furnace filter to set into, but I, it ended up creating more of a problem than I intended, so I just ended up flush trimming the whole thing to the middle support. And that got the furnace filter to slide in and out a lot more smoothly. I wanted the entire box to remain closed when the fan was running, so I put spring hinges on the front board to make sure it was always closed. This worked pretty well. I needed to make a small recess to accept the fan motor switch. The thickness of the wall of the box could only be about an eighth inch thick, so we cut a recess using the drill press and then chiseled it square. Right, good job. That's pretty good. We'll have, to, we'll have to hit some of that with the chisel. Once the recess is chiseled clean, we can drill the rest of the way through to accept the switch. Alright, up. Alright, get close. Right there, down. Yeah, you did it. All the way up, good job. To attach the fan, I had to find a way to attach the motor to the housing. I ended up cutting these scraps of plywood to match the dimensions of the box, and then I screwed them directly into the motor mounts. 
Then I could screw the mounts into the inner box of the frame. Once I had the fan inside the box, I realized the dimensions of the box were about one quarter inch off and I had to trim the fan down to fit. This was surprisingly easy. I just used some scissors to trim the blade down. As soon as I got the fan running, I realized the power cord was sticking out directly out the back of the box, so it was completely in the way of the furnace filter. It was easy enough to fix. All I did was remove the plug from its housing on the motor and installed the board with a few holes drilled in it so I could zip tie the plug directly to the housing, and all of this just got screwed into place. Then it was time to cut out the baffling. It turns out that about four years ago, just about every woodworker on YouTube made one of these. And one of the biggest things I learned from watching all of those videos is that the baffling size and position are more important than anything else you do to this box. If the baffling is too close to the blades or even behind the blades, the box will pull in air from the sides of the fan. So it's best to slightly undersize the hole and place the baffling in front of the blades instead of behind the blades. This will give you the best directional flow. This system ended up working a lot better than I expected. Everyone who makes one of these ends up having issues with airflow, but mine worked perfectly first try because of the placement of the baffle and the high amount of airflow I can get out of one of these cheap furnace filters. I drew on a quick marker to show the fan setting and gave everything a quick sanding to even everything out. I ended up using the last of my Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Enamel coating it. This air cleaner can be used as a desktop version the way you would a normal box fan, but I decided to put a French cleat on it because I'm addicted to French cleats. I... I think I need help. Either way, it worked. I'm absolutely blown away by how well this works. I'm a huge fan of how it turned out. It's nice to know that not all of my ideas are just hot air, even if it did take me a few days to filter through all of these designs. Daddy, stop it. Sorry. What do you think? Thanks for watching and smash.